Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. Everybody hit that like button. Comment down below. Let me know who you a fan of. Let me know who you rocking with, man. We just got a big breaking update about the Charleston White situation with Rainwater. They going back and forth. Listen to this phone call. Listen to this phone call. We got the strip club one day. And we went to church that morning. Mm -hmm. Then he broke down to me in church, telling me he was the one that took the gun out the car. For one, he didn't, want, he didn't like Mo 3 going over there. He felt like it was too risky. Did he take the gun out the car? Well, he didn't want Mo to catch the pistol case. Everybody know what Mo can go to stash spot is. That's why, when, mm -hmm. that's why when Mo 3 got out the car, the nigga went around to the passenger side to try to get the gun out where they know him to stash there. Normally, if the police pull him over, they don't they don't find this gun in the stash spot. They look at a good stash spot. Then took the gun out. He didn't want them going over there to the broad house because the broad mama liked Mo 3, the kids liked him, and the baby daddy was jealous. The baby daddy was jealous. Nobody knew what kind of car Mo 3 was driving, but Earl Spence and Rainwater. Three different cars. Earl Spence and Mo 3 stayed in the same apartment. When Mo found out that Earl stayed in the apartment, Mo 3 started from with Earl Spence. Get with him. Rainwater got mad at Mo3 because Earl Spence and Rainwater kind of grew up together because Rainwater mama and Earl Spence mama are best friends. Mm. So that's mm. yeah, so then they fall out over looks. Rain was going behind Mo3 back. Mm. Boosie and Mo3 had fell out because Mo3 was finna go sign with CMG when Yo got it. And they felt like they were really using it. Mo gonna give me everything. So that's why they're trying to go through the smirk campaign. Charleston White, man, he said that they can't touch him. He went to Boosie's hood. He went to Baton Rouge. He went to Atlanta. He went everywhere, even Chicago, and snuck in an interview. He went to every city that they said that he couldn't go to, and he didn't get touched one bit. Matter of fact, when he rolled up to Rolling Loud, he went to Rolling Loud, and literally it was it was people saying that he needs to be careful around rappers and that he should be scared of rappers retaliating on him. But turns out that he wasn't even scared and that it was it was the rappers who were the ones that should be worried about Charleston White because look what happened to Soldier Boy. Got pepper spray right in his face. Sent the, sent the boy home crying, man. So this is what you're dealing with when you're dealing with Charleston White. Is somebody who he's going to speak his mind no matter what. And he got he's basically has his own lane to where like he does things his own way. It's not a street way. It's not a hood way of doing things. But from his understanding and from what he's saying, man, it's like basically he's sending a warning and a message to everybody saying that he can call out. All the bad stuff rappers do. He can call out all the stuff that these celebrities do. And he's going to definitely give his opinion. But what comes with it is that he's basically letting them know that they actually can't do nothing to him, even if they wanted to. Like the fact that the dude is like in his 50s, almost 60 now. And so that's a, a veteran. That's like an a, a elderly person. So you can't do anything to somebody that old. And so that's why Charleston White plus another thing that Charleston White is famous and infamous for doing is that he's always literally calling the authority. He's calling the boys. He's calling 12. He's calling authorities. He's getting people in trouble because... You know, like he's basically making sure that they have repercussions for their behavior. So just like how when they came out online and they sent shots to Charleston White saying that they were going to pull up to him and that they were going to do this to him, they were going to do that to him. I mean, they were talking about all sorts of things threatening Charleston White. And Charleston White didn't take it lightly, man. He went full force on him. Not only did he come back out and he replied and went off on every single one of them people, but then again, he... The ones that actually threatened him like that and said that they were going to put his hand, put their hands on him. He actually called the authorities on them and got them in trouble, whether he got somebody locked up or had him get fined or a restraining order, whatever it was. It's like at the end of the day, Charleston White is letting people know that they really can't do the things that they want to him so that basically he could say whatever he wants and that 
unless they actually come and try to catch a case about doing something to him, that's the only way things are going to happen. And regardless, at the end of the day, if you tried or whatever, right, he's going to make sure that it ends in a case. So whether you whether he tells on you or whether you try to actually pull up and cross the line all because of a 50 year old man got into your feelings like that like a lot of people got to understand nowadays it's the it's like it's 2022 going on 2023 everybody be in their feelings that's why you see all these rappers come back and reply to charleston white like it's because he's getting his money and you see the rappers they're on the decline especially the old ones like boosie like ti everybody's been saying in the comment section that boosie's going broke that boosie needed a mill boosie did this boosie did that man everybody's talking man and they basically saying that that people are salty like the rappers are salty and that's why they commenting back that's why they firing back at charleston white it's because he's able to talk about him he don't have to rap or nothing like that and he's still going on every like pop podcast he's going on all the platforms he's selling out his merch and everything like that but the people they they don't know that the people that's getting into it with charleston white they don't know that he's making over 10k a month on his merch and so he doesn't care what he says on the videos because at the end of the day people are going to his site and buying the merch directly so it, it don't matter if they try to come back and, and send shots at him or do this, do that on social media. He has the he already has a following. He already has the fan base. People are going to agree with him regardless of what a, whatever rapper it is that he's going against. And at the end of the day, it's like the people he's calling out, the people, man, they know what they did. They done did some dirty deeds, man, because behind every great fortune that these rappers have is a big, even more crazier crime behind it. And so what he's doing, Charleston White, is basically just calling them out on the stuff that they wanted to keep behind closed doors, the things that they wanted to keep hidden from the world, the things that, because they already influence and they already is taking over the minds of the youths in the world, man. All these youths, all these kids out there, they paying close attention attention to the rappers because they think that that's what's is cool right now they like what's cool no matter what generation you in when you go back and think of when you was 15 16 17 18 whatever right you was into whatever was cool whatever was not cool is not cool and so everybody just kind of was like basically a sheep herd they everyone was doing mainstream things if if uh if rap or hip-hop is cool then cool everybody's gonna be listening to rap even you got kids in the suburbs you got kids from like wealthy families and all that instead of listening to that they listening to all the young the rappers and stuff and so whatever charleston white is doing is letting everybody know hey if you're gonna be paying attention and listening to these messages and letting these songs be played in your head over and over again Really, there's a message behind what they're doing, and a lot of stuff that they're talking about is either cap or it's the negative. So he's just showing you guys all the negatives that these rappers is doing out there and saying and putting in they in they product, like in they songs and everything like that. So he's trying to basically, you know, the rap they they all portraying anybody who wants to be a rapper, they they all portraying lavish lifestyle as if as if they think that just because you rap you're going to be rich or something like that. No, a lot of these dudes, they had to sign away a lot of stuff, man. But behind beyond that, he just Charleston White is just basically calling them out and saying exactly what it is, what a lot of people are afraid to speak out and say directly to these rappers. And that's why a lot of people, they feuding with Charleston White because they know that he's waking a lot of people up to the fact that They've been leading the they fans wrong for a long time, man. And that's why all the crazy stuff be happening to the world. It's because when the fan be listening to, oh, do a drill, do a drill, do a drill. And then they end up going and meeting people. And anytime they go out and they party, whatever, they trying to ha they trying to be on some meeting people who look like they from the drill life. Um, anybody they follow on IG, they're going to want to follow. They're going to like the pictures of everybody who's doing something drill related. Right. And so when you get when they keep this on replay, drill, drill, drill every day, it's no wonder where they pick the wrong friends and then fall out in a bad lifestyle where they end up doing a drill or they get hit up because someone did a drill on them just because they put themselves in that situation by always 
have, listen in the drill, getting it pounded in their head, and then they go hang out with their drill friends, and then they get a drill done on them. You see what we're saying? Or if they make it to where they actually go and do a drill and they not capping or scared, then what's going to happen is that these they're not genius masterminds. They're going to get caught and they're going to get caught pretty quick. And most of these people, they don't they don't want to. At the end of the day, nobody wants to do 30 years. Nobody wants to do 75, 40 years or whatever. So they're going to tell on whoever they were with. So whatever loyalty that they got from all they drill friends or all these Rappers, like whatever loyalty that they got, <laughs> what Charleston White is trying to tell y'all that just like how Charleston White tells on the rappers and all the street guys, the street guys and the rappers are going to end up telling on each other anyways, because they they can't they don't want to do the 60 years or the 30 years. So at the end of the day, it's like they ha you have to basically decide, are you going to um see the rights and the wrongs of this or are you just going to keep ignoring the facts and keep going with the way you're going and so that's what message that you guys got to pay attention to and that everybody's got to look at because hey at the end of the day man the whole thing is a situation that is just keeps on going it's a revolving door type of situation